Good morning and welcome to a new week on Life Connect. I do hope that you're enjoying just uh, journeying with us as we seek to plug into the Word of God Monday through Friday and encourage one another in our walk with Jesus. Yesterday, uh, Sunday the 5th of July, was the first Sunday that churches in many parts of the United Kingdom were allowed to meet again and after a long season in lockdown. And yet the nature of those meetings um, meant that many churches have decided not yet to open their buildings for a public gathering of worship. And that's because we're not allowed to sing because of the potential spread of disease through singing. We have to keep socially distant from one another. We've got a maximum number of about 30 who can attend the church building. And for many of us, um, it just wouldn't feel like church to embrace, to hug, to shake hands, to spend time, to enjoy refreshments before and after a service, to hang out together, to hear God's word preached and to sing our hearts out in praise and worship. So it's been challenging. I wonder if you're finding it challenging. I wonder what your church are doing. It has led me and uh, many others, many church leaders, leaders of lots of independent and local uh, evangelical churches across the United Kingdom to ask the question, what is church? And a further question, what should church look like in the new normal, whatever the new normal is? So I want to read to you, and it's a passage that we're going to spend the weekend on Life Connect. And I want to read to you Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 down to verse 47. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation and it says this. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day and met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Now it's quite a quite a wonderful passage and for those of us who know it and who have read it perhaps many times, um, reading it in this season, it comes across with a freshness. There's a community described here that I find incredibly exciting. It's the kind of community that I want to belong to. It's a community that met regularly, that shared things. They had food in common. They had possessions in common. They enjoyed being together. They loved eating together. They loved meeting together. They had a sense of awe over the presence of God among them. And they had the goodwill of the community in which they lived. And God added to their numbers every single day. This was a dynamic church in the heart of Jerusalem that was growing. Now, when I grew up, the model of church looked something like this image uh, that you'll see on the screen. You've got the church and uh, we believe, as it says here in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, that they uh, shared in the apostles' doctrine. They would devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine, to the Lord's Supper, to fellowship and to prayer. Now, in the church where I grew up, and in many churches uh, of a whole variety of, of types in our nation and perhaps around the world, that verse, as it was unpacked, led to a meeting for each of those things. And there was a meeting for Bible teaching. Sometimes it was called the ministry meeting, and that's where someone would stand up and preach from God's word at the front. Sometimes it was a conversational Bible study where people would sit, open the Bible on their laps and discuss its meaning and apply it to their lives. So that's the apostles doctrine. We had a meeting for it. We had a meeting for the Lord's Supper every Sunday morning at a quarter past 11 in Ebenezer Gospel Hall. The saints of God met to break bread 
to worship the Lord around the Lord's table and to share in the Lord's Supper. And of course, many churches continue to have a service solely for communion or to include communion as a central part in their gatherings. And of course, communion, sharing a common cup, is impossible in this current uh, period and season in which we're in. But there was a meeting for it. Then there was a meeting for prayer. Prayer meeting was often uh, thought to be and encouraged to be the most important meeting of the week. And so we had a weekly prayer meeting and people were encouraged to come along so we could make our needs known to God and pray. But we had a meeting for it. And then there was fellowship, which was occasionally a cup of tea in people's homes. Or sometimes, once a year, we had something called the annual fellowship meeting so we had fellowship once a year of course people had it much more frequently but we called it a meeting but what happens if we can't have meetings if we can't have services if we can't gather what happens to the church i want to encourage you to think about a different model this week as we unpack what the church did look like in the book of acts and what our experience of church perhaps might be going forward in this season in which God is allowing us, giving us the grace to live through. So it looks like this. Let's remove those words from the screen. Let's put up some new words. This is a church that had authority. And uh, this week we're going to think about what having authority is like in the church. It's not the authority of the bishops. Or even of the apostles but they followed the apostles doctrine that is the unpacking the teaching of God's Word I've got my my Bible here and um, we believe that the Bible is God's Word to us it is special it is unique it is inspired that means it's breathed into by the Holy Spirit and I want to encourage you we're, we're running an Alpha course in our own fellowship at the moment and uh, last Thursday, I encouraged those who are searching and seeking and on the Alpha course because they're interested in whether there's a God and whether they can come to know this God. I encourage them, get a copy of the Bible, download you version on your phone and start to read it and ask God to speak to you. Because, you know, we believe that authority comes from Jesus, who is Lord of the church. He reveals his will to us through his Holy Spirit, who he sends to live in the lives of Christians. And we know his will by following, reading and applying the word of God to our lives. So Tim's going to take a bit more time over that tomorrow. What does it mean to live under authority and how should the church start to unpack and how should I as a Christian start to live out as a person under the Lordship of Jesus who follows the Word of God, the Bible. They were also a church who had authenticity. There was authenticity. I mean, they had this wonderful fellowship together. Uh, they um, de they devoted themselves to fellowship and they met regularly in each other's homes sharing meals with great joy and generosity there was authenticity they didn't have a meeting for fellowship they had fellowship they devoted themselves to it you know they belonged together i love meeting with my brothers and sisters but you know i don't need a meeting for it and phil davis is going to help us think about what authenticity is what is it like to have authentic fellowship what might it mean if we're meeting more in homes than in church buildings because clearly they had no church building in acts chapter 2 they had a large gathering when they could gather in the area of the temple in jerusalem and they had numerous smaller gatherings in homes the doors open for us to experience and express deep and real fellowship. What's that going to look like? I'm looking forward to Phil unpacking that with us. Then there was a sense of awe that came over them. And on Thursday, Beverly is going to take us into a reflection on worship. You know, worship is having a deep sense of awe that God is here. God is here. My dad, when he was converted, 
was taken along a little while later, just a few Sundays maybe after his conversion. He was 16 years old and he was taken to a little brethren assembly in Belfast, a little gospel hall. And he was taken to, taken to a breaking of bread service, to the communion or to the Lord's Supper service. And he said, when I sat there, I thought I was in heaven. I thought I was in heaven. I think there's a problem, isn't there, that we seem to have made the thing, the Lord's Supper, into a meeting when actually the thing, the Lord's Supper, remembering and honouring Jesus and what he did for us in his death, is to enable us to come into a moment and experience the reality of the presence of God so that our hearts might bow in awe and wonder. Whatever the church looks like going forward, surely it should be a church that is overwhelmed by the all that comes with knowing that God is among us. I don't want to gather again in church where God's not present. Someone asked years ago if the Holy Spirit was removed from your church, how many of your churches or how many of our churches would carry on as normal. That's desperately challenging, isn't it? And then finally, and on Friday, uh, a Darren is going to help us think about anticipation anticipation what do i mean by anticipation well they prayed god add it to their number every day when i pray when the church prays whether in a large gathering or in a small home or in someone's back garden don't you want your prayers to anticipate that the God who is present and inspires us to have awe and wonder is present to move in saving, redeeming, reviving and renewing power. I don't want to belong to a church that goes through the motions. I don't want to belong to a church that if it can't have its meetings isn't church. Surely we want to be under authority. I want to be under the authority of Jesus Christ and I want the Word of God to be my guide and it should be our guide in the church as we're led by the Holy Spirit. I want to be in a church that's authentic in its fellowship where whether we're just two or three, whether we're half a dozen in a home or whether we're 600 in a huge building, our experience of one another and loving one another is genuine and real and deep. I want to be in a church that's moved in awe of the God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I wanna be in a church that believes that what God did in the past, in Acts 2, in the history of our nation, he can do it again. I don't wanna be sat in a prayer meeting where we go through the motions, say the same old rote prayers. I wanna be part of a church, I wanna meet with people, I wanna be in a fellowship. Or when we pray, we pray with boldness because we expect this God who loves us wants to act, wants to save, wants to redeem, wants to renew. I am looking forward to the four guys unpacking these verses with us as we think about these themes. Let's pray. Father, we want to say thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you, Lord, for the church that you have founded. Jesus, you said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Lord, help us to be a church, not of meetings, but a church of awe, of authenticity, of anticipation and under authority. Lord, help us to be under your authority. Lead us by your spirit anoint us, equip us for this season. Lord, may your church rise up in our day to be the peacemakers, to be the gospel bringers, to be the reconcilers, and to be the ambassadors of Christ, as though you make your appeal through us. Lord, help us to be that church and help us to learn what that means in this season and in the months and years ahead, in Jesus' precious name. 
Amen. I'm so thrilled that you've chosen to take time to join us on Life Connect. Look forward to you joining us through the rest of the week. God bless you and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.